Okay, so I want to talk about pressure volume, pressure volume work, basically a continuation of chapter two. And when I was thinking about problems to solve, uh, I was thinking about modifications of problem 2.7 and 2.8 from third edition of Gaskell. Maybe they've, they've changed numbers, but those problems, again, we'll, we'll walk through one of them. But what's more important, I think, is I was realizing the way that we teach is a little bit confusing in as much as most of our teaching seems to focus on the special cases. Uh, and, and for me, as, as a student, when I was first learning, I was you know, thinking, okay, so do I have adiabatic? Do I have isothermal, isobaric? What are the differences? What do they do? Why do they do this? And that is important, but that is uh, less important than the you know, greater concept. So let's let's go back and and just review kind of the greater concept. And, and there's two parts to this. Uh, one part is that again we just defined ourselves to be a, a a gas state. So we have pressure, and we have volume. And you know if you want to, you can have temperature out here. You don't really need it. Uh, you know, most of the time we're talking about pressure volume because we're, we're talking about work or whatever variables you have. In this case, it's pressure volume. And within pressure volume, you've got some point. And within that point, it's defined by a state function. And or equation of state, and our equation of state is PV equals nRT. There are many different equations of state. In this case, this is the one we've got. And this is essentially it, right? I guess, I guess the, the next part is that if you move from state one to state two, the work is P, or let me write it this way, P dV. Draw this in like that. That means I'm going this way, we have a positive work, the shape of that curve gets substituted in. So work is equal to the integral P V dV. Now, the question is then, Where does this come from? And this is where the special cases come from. Now, if you look at like equation, a uh, problem 2.8 of the textbook, problem 2.8, they give you pressure, volume, I give you the equation of a circle, and that equation of state is uh, r squared is equal to x minus a squared plus y minus b squared. So the problem explicitly gave, I think, uh, 25 is equal to. Uh, P minus 10 squared plus, oops, I guess X is our V, doesn't really matter because <laughs> they're both 10 squared. 
So we define a circle here with radius five. The way you solve the problem was you recognize the radius is five. And you can solve that area by integration, or you can use the equation of a circle because you know what that equation is and get, get the answer. Uh, so one place that this PV comes from is it can be de defined. And most of the time in a thermodynamics textbook, when you have a defined pressure volume, they give you something which is easy to solve. And uh, that's it. Uh, now let, let's continue discussing problem 2.8 here before we go on. It's worth pointing out that the next part of the problem was find the maximum temperature. Well, if you have, this was our PV, so work is equal to the integral PV dV, you can find your work. Well, this PV uh, also can go into a PV equals nRT, T is equal to PV over and R is equal to P, B, B, uh, and R. So we can say, take the derivative of T with respect to V, set it equal to zero. Find the extrema. And again, that's, you know, application of the first law of thermodynamics to calc one. Uh, so in this case, we defined PV and was picked in some way that it made a solvable problem. Well, we can also define PV in terms of special curves. That's the other way we can define PV. And one special curve, you know, is isobaric. Let's change colors here, why don't we? So the isobaric curve, and this is from problem 2.7. Uh, PV from state one to state two is just a straight line. P1 equals P2. So the area under your curve is just P. Delta V. Okay. Another special curve is isothermal. This is not as boring as uh, isobaric, but nonetheless, it's the same concept. P V state one to state two, it will look something like this. Right? At any point on that curve, T is a constant. And that comes about because P1, V1 over N, R equals T is equal to P2, V2 over N, R. That defines PV. And you put that into is equal to 
TV, DV, and you wind up with integral W is equal to N R T natural log V2 over V1, which we can substitute in for volume and get N R T natural log P1 over P2. And uh, that's it, right? Uh, and again, that's because that has a special functional form. You get a nice analytic expression out. It doesn't have to be. But nonetheless, it is one particular functional form. And the last, we have an adiabatic. And in the case of adiabatic, we went through a little derivation. At the end of the derivation, you got P1, V1, gamma equals P2, V2, gamma. And that's it. That corresponds to a unique curve, you know, your isothermal curve, you know, anywhere in there is, is constant temperature, but you know, you can whoop, deviate from that anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be on it. We're just picking these as special cases. So even though this textbook, well, all textbooks put an exorbitant amount of time on, oh, let's talk isobaric or isothermal or adiabatic. What those really are is a pressure volume curve and some PV that defines a movement in state space that you can get work from. Now, there's always going to be a temptation for some of you, and I know I was there when I was an undergrad to try to equate, why well, use you know this equation for that and so on and so forth. And that's not bad, but what's most important is to recognize, for example, the significance of the equation. And that so happens, the significance of the equation is the input to that integral. So this is our uh, time for solving problems. So I'll, I'll work through part of a problem. Uh, feels a little bit trivial to do this. Uh, now that you know, you see we're just integrating, but uh, let's do it anyhow. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's go to problem 2.7. Uh, the basis of problem 2.7 is, is that they give you uh, I'm not going to solve the entire problem because it seems a bit redundant, uh, is that they give you two different curves. You know, one curve is something like this, and the other curve, I can't remember the shape, but, you know, it goes like that. And the other curve goes like that. Now, in these two curves, this one, they give you all of the parameters you need to calculate the work. This one, they give you the work, but they have some unknown P. So this is work one, this is work two, and the name of the game is and define P. So assuming you can do basic algebra, which I think seems like a fair assumption, uh, we'll just work through this first curve. Okay, so in this, in this, uh, they define P0, see, 
n is equal to one, p zero is equal to one atmosphere, uh, t is 25 Celsius is equal to 298K. You know, I really wish people would just round that up to 300. It'd be so much easier for the math. Uh, nonetheless, 298K, that'll make us all feel nice in room temperature. Uh, so you get the temperature and the pressure, which means that if you have two of the three variables, you've got B0 is equal to N r t zero over p zero r is equal to eight point two zero five seven three seven times ten to the minus two liter atmosphere per mole kelvin substituting in you get a volume of twenty four point four, five, three liters. Okay, this first transition is isothermal. So zero to one is isothermal, meaning that T1 is equal to T0. The problem defines P1 as 0 0.5 atmosphere, which means uh, B1 is equal to nRT1 over P1 is equal to 48.906. Okay. Now going one to two, the problem defines it as isobaric. So it's a flat line there, zero, one, two. So isobaric, P2 equals P1. Uh, the problem defines T2 as 100, C, which is 373K, which means, that's right, you're finding a pattern here. Oh. P2 is equal to 61.2145 liters. Okay, two to three. It defines as uh, isothermal. And that isothermal was, uh, means T whoop, three equals T two P. This is again by definition. They define it as, as uh, putting it up to one atmosphere. We're closing the gap here. Uh, so that means V3 is equal to NRT3 over P3 is equal to 30.6073, which is why I drew it kind of way over to the side. And then that last is three, two, zero, isobaric. Okay. Get the total work. Well, we've got the isothermal. Well, let, let's, let's take the, uh, well, yeah, let's take the isothermal parts first. So the isothermal components, that's work zero to one, right? Oh, here, sorry, isothermal, which means that is N R T 
natural log of V1 over V0, and work going from two to three, NRT natural log V3 uh, over V2. Notice that uh, one is larger than zero and three is smaller than two. So that means that this is going to be negative. Uh, oops. And now let's take our isobaric. So work going from one to two is P1, V2 minus V1. And work going from three to zero is P3, V0 minus V3. Again. Negative. So, add those three together. We get minus, uh, where is it? I got it written down here 4.26582 joule. And uh, so it goes, right? So these negatives, again, that is when going this other direction. So our first integrals, that area, and our, our, our sorry, <laughs> this, oops. This area, our second, our this area, which means that our resultant is negative and is defined as the area inside the loop. Nothing that's particularly surprising here. So uh, I think that's enough for problem solving. I, I want to leave you with one kind of final thought. Uh, what about an iso isovolumetric change? Right? We talked about this. What about something that does this? Is work done? Well, first off, I have a really hard time of picturing what that would look like. I mean, the way to picture a system is, you know, it's, it's closed and then this is some type of metal membrane or impermeable membrane. And when I apply a pressure to that, that membrane bows. So the work, PDV. Can I increase can I change the volume without changing the pressure or changing the mole number? More importantly, what does work mean? So imagine, again, we talked about the idea of, of work force on a volume or on a distance, right? So you have 
some block on a table, you apply a force and it moves delta x. So work is equal to force delta x, right? You got that from physics, you got that from, you know, the definition of joule, Newton meter. What if I take this block sitting stationary and I increase the force I'm pushing on it, but it doesn't move. Do I do work? Well, having left you with that question, uh, I will go and uh, you should expect on Monday to see a problem on the quiz that fundamentally is uh, testing your understanding of work broadly and uh, possibly concept of is isothermal, adiabatic, and uh, isobaric.